everybody armored pants here and i have another video for you this is on the battle pass tank the ox collectible tank and we're going to have a look at it the complete guide as always um this is available at the current battle pass you get it at level 35. so um let's have a look at it here in garage because i want to show you something pretty cool actually about it and um, you see the horns come out when you select a tank in garage the horns pop out which is actually a pretty cool feature i have to say i like it uh, me likey uh, you can see here coming out and then we'll zoom in and have a look at it in action again so that's pretty unique pretty cool feature um, and we'll have a look at some of the other unique features of the tank uh, in a second when we look at the um, details on blitzhanger.com but this is a cool little addition so hats off to wargaming now this comes in the battle pass as we said you get it at level 35 as always there's the 549 basic pass and the 2199 more advanced pass whichever one um, uh, fits your pocket or suits your pocket i guess is what you want to get and um, it's a type 58 derivative so basically it's a chinese medium tank and it's more or less the same as the type 58 with some differences which we look into and of course if you like the t54 85 too very similar tank as well as the t as a type 58 is derived from the t34 85 of course a chinese copy of the russian tank so let's have a look at the tech spec so in terms of provisions i would use tofu improved fuel and peking duck which is pretty nice actually they are very good provisions i have to say i would run gun rammer supercharger and vertical stabilizer because it's a medium tank vertical stabilizer because you're going to fire when you're moving 85 millimeter gun which is basically the same as the type 58 so if you've played the type 58 and you'll be familiar with this gun. Reload to 6.6 .6 seconds, goes out to seven seconds if you run calibrated shells, which you may want to, because the pen numbers are not that high. I personally run um, um, gun rammer. Uh, pen numbers are 128 millimeters um, with AP, 172 millimeters with APCR, and 43 millimeters with HE. Now, if you run calibrated shells, that goes up to 134, 181, and 47 millimeters. So the pen is not great, so therefore that's one reason you may want to run the calibrated shells, although personally I don't. Damage points are 200, 170, and 300 with AP, APC, or and HE, respectively. Now, um, one thing to note about um, the gun system here is the muzzle velocity. The muzzle velocity is different for every shell. So it's 1164 meters per second for AP, 1425 for APCR, and only 1030 meters per second for HE, which basically means that there's a 40% difference between the muzzle velocity of a HE and an APCR shell. So you need to be very aware of that when you're switching between, cycling between shells. Gun index, index is 10.5 really good for Chinese medium tank. If you remember, we recently reviewed the Conway that has a gun index of 10. So you're talking about tier nine TD gun handling. Mobility index is 7.7, .7, which is also pretty good. Um, and that's due mainly to its top speed and its traverse because its power to weight ratio is just okay. It's not great. Concealment numbers are 296, uh, sorry, at 296 meters are 228 if you're still, 243 if you are moving. And your worst if you're firing and moving is 270, sorry, it's 277, and your own view range is only 279. So what does all that mean? Well, it means that it's actually not a bad scouting vehicle. Um, obviously not as good as a light vehicle, but it is pretty decent. It can do that role. As we look here at the armor profile, what you will know, which is different to a uh, standard T3485 or the Type 58, is these angles on the front. It has this angled armor and that will give you some additional bounces. It also has some spaced armor here on the side and the gun mantlet, and this is interesting because it has seven degrees of gun depression, which is actually not bad for a Chinese medium tank. Elevation is 20. You lose two degrees of elevation compared to the Type 58, by the way, that has 22. Its top speed is 55 kilometers per hour, the same as the Type 58, and it does 20 in reverse. By the way, it also, one of the differences between this and the Type 58 is the muzzle velocity. You're getting about a 15% bump in muzzle velocity, so that makes the gun handling better than it is on a Type 58. So bear that in mind as well, guys. So a little bit of bump for this um, collectible tank above its Tech 3 equivalent. So that's pretty decent. And of course, you have that additional camo complete with the horns and the bull ring sticking out of the front of the tank. So let's have a look at some gameplay, let's roll. It's a first class mastery game, I just shot it this morning, I've only played a few games in the tank, I've played a few up to it etc. Um, and it is decent I have to say, the tank is pretty good. Um, 
you will get some bounces. You can side scrape in this tank too, and um, you can get some bounces off that additional slopes on the front of the armor and the front of the hull. And the spaced armor on the uh, turret means that you also get a few bounces, particularly if a KV2 or something's very HE actually you, not bounces, but he's not gonna get a maximum roll on you. So it has some advantages over the um, Type 58, the Tech 3, it's Tech 3 equivalent. Um, now, the tank itself is basically, it's kind of quintessential medium tank, right? It is not the fastest tank on the map, and it is not the most rapid firing tank on the map. It doesn't have the best view range. So it is medium, not just in terms of its tank type, it is medium in its nature too. It is not the worst and it's not the best at everything. It has a decent rate of fire. It has a better rate of fire, by the way, than um, its tech tree equivalent. Um, has the same pen numbers, of course, but slightly better reload. So it has a slightly better DPM. Um, and overall, it is a decent tank. And what I like about it is, firstly, the design, those little horns coming out the bull ring, um, you know, kind of coming into the whole Chinese culture, year of the ox and all of that. Um, but um, the other thing I like about it is that as a collectible tank, it is better than its tech tree equivalent. Not much, there's not much in it, guys. And not so much that you can play it differently but it has slight advantages. And I think that's important when you pay money effectively for a collectible tank, that it has some advantage, it is slightly better. Um, so and this is, as the name suggests, a collectible tank. It is a nice tank to have in your garage. That camo is very, very nice. And it overall is a very, very good looking tank. You can see here at the back and it's button that, you know, nice, has nice lines, nice camo. Overall, just a good, good, decent looking tank some nice features those horns are pretty cool and you know nothing spectacular but um you know a decent a decent collectible tank and something you know if you're going to pay 549 for the battle pass something that's definitely worth having in your garage why not especially when you consider the price of some premium tanks that we're game are charging for and um, now um one thing that boils my piss about it is though um, and this is a pet hate of mine with premium um, and collectible tanks. If you're paying for the tank, which effectively you are with this, because right? you need to buy the battle pass, you can't get it without the battle pass. And I know you're not paying much, but still, it should come with all the equipment unlocked. You shouldn't then have to spend an extra whatever it is, million plus credits, getting the equipment unlocked, right? I mean, surely it should come with the equipment unlocked. I mean, it's not a big deal for Wargaming. And it really boils my piss when you basically buy a tank, because effectively you are buying this, right? Um, uh, and it's even more the case with a premium tank. Premium tanks that come um, without the equipment unlocked, it really annoys me, I don't understand it. It's not premium if it doesn't come with all the features, right? Because then you have to buy them, how's that premium? Right? It's kind of goes against the whole nomenclature, the whole description of the tank. But anyway, guys, that aside, it's definitely a decent tank worth getting, and you know, especially if you only pay five forty nine, definitely a decent collectible to have in your garage. So I hope you found that useful. I hope you found it enjoyable. Now I guess all that remains for me to say is, as always, cheers, mush, and pants off.